think what you're dealing with. The majesty and grandeur of the English language is the greatest possession we have. The noblest thoughts that ever flow through the hearts of men are contained in its extraordinary, imaginative and musical mixtures of sounds. And that's what you set yourself out to conquer, Eliza. And conquer it, you will. Good morning, teachers, staff, honored guests, class of 2016, Director Rearwall, and my coach, C. Han. My name is Ricardo Gomez, and welcome to my senior talk. <laughs> Have you saw in the movie, My Fair Lady? Professor Henry Higginson helps his protege, Eliza Doolittle, overcome her speech and language impediments. Not what you saw, was a lighthearted moment in a movie, but the subject of the speech and language impediments can be a serious one. There is some recent research out there that shows children who have speech and language impairment can often suffer emotionally and academically. This graph, yeah, this graph, uh, shows that students with speech and language impairments often have problems at school and at home because they're frustrated and can't express their anxiety or anger properly. Many times they're even confused by their disability. The graph shows the percentage of children who have behavior problems that are directly associated with speech and language impairments. At school, they're labeled shy, delayed, or problem students. That was me. If it isn't already been obvious, I have speech and language impairments, and I've been receiving many uh, services for most of my school years. I was a shy boy who was afraid to speak up in front of his peers in elementary school, who was bullied by classmates. I was depressed most of the time, even if I didn't always show it. Many times, I would just come home to seek for my mother's love. There are clearly about 70 students who are receiving speech and language services here at GPA. There is a good research out there that shows about 50% of the children with developmental language disorder have, all, have all, uh, also emotional behaviors or social difficulty or some combination of these. That is the rate which is three times more than the children without such impairments. 
The most frequently reported psychopathology is showing behavior such as ADHD, impulsive action, conductive disorder, and aggressions. Study also shows that children with language impairment have other number of other problems. For example, low self-esteem, depression, and anxiety, especially the thought of public speaking. Some studies indicate that children with language disorder tend to struggle around their peers because they're too afraid to speak out loud. Sometimes these children have fewer friends, be invited less frequently to take part in fun activities and be ignored by their classmates. So you can see there are real problems that affect students and adults who have identified having speech impairments. And sometimes these problems only get worse over time. A 14-year study conducted by Journal of America Academy of Child Adult Psychiatry found that from age 5 to 19, psychiatry problems actually increase over time because of speech disorders. Some of these problems in children with language disorder is thought to be less particularly because there are teased and bullied. Fortunately, I received a lot of help from really good people in my life. I gained some really good people uh, who understood me and had the same pr uh, problem that I. Also, uh, I have help from many speech teachers from my past school years. And in my sophomore year, I met Ms. Miller, GPA, speech and language teacher. All those joyful people and experience helped me out in my dark times and made me the person who I am today. A happier person, a person who's no longer afraid to get in front of his peers and speak with confidence. Please, oh my, uh, please take a time to watch a short video of my speech teacher, Ms. Miller. Hi, I am Ms. Mueller, and I am a speech language pathologist at Gompers Preparatory Academy. That is just a big mouthful for I'm a speech therapist, or uh, some people call me a speech teacher. Um, I think there's some misconception when they hear that because they think of just the speech part. Um, and I do have students who work on just speech, so the S or the R and the L, but a large majority of my students are actually language impaired. So that would be either expressively, they can't get out their message, what they need to say, or receptively, they're not able to understand what they're hearing. Um, so there is the speech articulation disorders, there are language disorders, there's also voice disorders. Um, sometimes if they're improperly using their voice, they'll have um, like a hoarse quality of voice. Also there are um, fluency disorders, so kiddos who stutter. And then the more um, severe would be nonverbal, so they're not communicating at all unless they have um, maybe a communication device or they're using sign language. So there's a variety. Um, I have I've worked here now for three years, and I've had anywhere from 65 to 75 students that I see on a weekly basis, um, and they're you know from sixth to twelfth grade. Uh, I try to tell students that they're not the only one, um, and I think sometimes they feel a little bit singled out or embarrassed. Um, so it's been nice to have Ricardo work with Sophia because she's a sixth grader, and that can be so intimidating, um, you know, coming in and um, not having you know, this R sound, she gets teased. She said she's gotten teased and um, Ricardo has that empathy and he's been there and he's a senior now so um, she can really look up to him. And it's been so great because I've seen him come out of his shell and she's come out of her shell um, and he provides such great feedback for her and just good verbal praise. So um, he's amazing and it's been such a joy just to see them work together. Um, so yeah, thank you Ricardo for all that you have done. Um, you've been an amazing role model to Sophia. Um, bye guys.
since I have been with Ms. Miller, I made a lot of improvements in my speech. My self-confidence has also improved. I know that because Ms. Carr, who was my seventh grade and ninth grade English teacher, told me how much I improved in my speaking skills and in my confidence. I remember when I was back in ninth grade, I had to give a presentation of learning in front of my classmates on band books that we were reading in Ms. Carr class. My PO was on the book to give her, if you see in the screen. We had created a PowerPoint for to discuss the plot and the character and so on the book. I was really nervous and anxious about the thought of speaking in front of my peers. But not only did I get through it, I felt pretty good afterwards. What also helped me push through my PO was seeing two great people I see as my motivators. Darian, Jimmy, you guys are motivated to me, and I thank you for that. I couldn't have uh, got in front of my freshman class and peak without the help I received from my speech and language services. I felt like I'd come a long way in my elementary and middle school days when I was too shy or nervous to get in, uh, speak out loud. That's why I'm so passionate about helping others overcome their speech and language impairments so they can succeed too. And, that, and this is where my service story begins. I'd like you all to meet Sophia. She is a wonderful, sweet middle school student here at GPA, who is just happy to be my speech and language partner. When I followed my senior talk, I knew right away I wanted to take more after role in helping a student overcome their speech and language impairment. I asked Ms. Miller if it would be possible to work with a student of hers. And she said that she'll come back to me once she finds the right candidate. About a week later, Ms. Miller introduced me to Sophia. But before I could begin working with Sophia, I had to, uh, Ms. Miller wanted to sit down with me to first prepare me how to work with Sophia. I also didn't work begin, uh, working with Sophia right away. I had to visit Ms. Miller in the beginning, and this would also get, uh, get Sophia to get comfortable with me on the room and allow me to get a chance to know Sophia. Sophia is clearly struggling with the word that end with the R sounds. Words like fear, R, toy, pictures, just to name a few. Oh my god, I gotta see that. Here is a uh, funny story. I, struggle, I don't struggle with my R sound in English, but I do have pr problems pronouncing my R sound in Spanish. You know how we Latino roll our R's? As long as I remember, which is ironic, I had never been able to properly pronounce my rolling R when I speak Spanish. So shame on me on this. <laughs> so in a way, Sophia and I already have a lot in common in speech wise. Ms. Miller, helped me come up with a plan to help Sophia in the speech area, which she needed help with. I helped Sophia read her article of interest that contained the R sound, especially at the end of the words, and helped her create a practice list of R words. With the help of my coach, Mr. Shia, I even created a game for Sophia. There are a lot of R words in the English language. Seriously, look at the dictionary. Like many other students who struggle around the word R words, where Sophia has difficulty with the word that R sound that end with in the N. I came up with a fun game along with my coach, Mr. Jian, that involved using the letter R. This is how it works. The game is really simple, but the game is still a prototype to keep you in mind. Let's just, uh, well, let me just show you a short video of me and Sophia playing the game I created while I explained how the game works. With each right answer, Sophia is allowed to proceed to the next island until she reaches the treasure island. If Sophia cannot pronounce the phrase, she must keep repeating the phrase until she masters it. When I first talk about the game, I didn't know what kind of rules they should be or how to play it. You should kind of develop with my coach, Mr. Sheehan. Then I have an idea of the rule of the game should be when you, when you earn key by getting each card right, 
and so many people unlock the treasure on Treasure Island. So many tire over there. What I feared during my time with Sophia is that we had a great time working together. She always joyful for me for being her, in there as her tutor. In a short time, we've been working together. It said I've been like friends, helping one another. I helped her where the NDR sounding was, and Sophia helped me making progress on my senior talk. But it goes deeper than that. I feel really good helping a student who has suffered the same stigma as I. I made me really proud of myself that I can volunteer my time to help someone else overcome their speech impairments so that they can be more successful in their academic and their social life. There are some days that Sophia struggled in her speech therapies with Ms. Miller and myself, but she is a really good trooper. She always come to her, come to her session with a positive attitude and a smile on her face. And her positive attitude even rolled on me. The fact she tries so hard, she stays so positive, even though her struggles is an inspiration to me. Before I end my talk, I want to leave you with this message. If you have a classmate who's struggling to speak in front of their peers because of their speech and language problems, encourage them to overcome their fears. Say you got this. When you see them struggling with their speech, support them, love them. Don't tease them or make fun of them and definitely and surely don't, definitely don't bully them. Giving them support and understanding and showing them love can actually change their life. Thank you and this concludes my senior talk. Thank you.